When Enlil, the oldest of the Anunnaki, is fed up with the noise of humans, he decides to flood the earth. This is part two of Utnapishtim and the Flood. If you haven't already, go watch part one and let's keep going. We left off at Utnapishtim's sacrifice. After he had sent out the three birds and the third bird, the raven, didn't come back, they knew it was time to leave the boat. And in gratitude, Utnapishtim sets up a sacrifice, pouring libations over the top of the mountains. Seven and seven cult vessels he set up. Upon their plate stands he heaped cane, cedar wood, myrtle. And when the gods smelled the sweet savor, they gathered like flies around the sacrificer. And the first of the gods to speak is our one and only Ishtar. Lifting up her ever-famous jewels, she makes her speech to the present gods. As surely as the lapis around my neck, I shall not forget. I shall be mindful of these days and forget them never. Let the gods come. Let them all come. Except Enlil. For he, unreasoning, brought on the deluge. He who consigned my children to destruction. But being the oldest of the Anunnaki, nothing gets past Enlil. He eventually gets wind of this party. And when he sees Utnapishtim and his people, he is wroth. Has some living soul escaped? No one is meant to survive my destruction. So Ninurta, with total tattletale energy, goes, It was Ea. Ea heard everything. Ea was the one who told him. It's giving teacher's pet. But Ea isn't new to these games, and he isn't at a lack for wit. So he goes, Father Enlil, wisest of the gods, hero of the world, you're not an unreasonable guy. Why would you do something as unreasonable as bring on a deluge? We're not trying to destroy all the humans. We love them. Let's keep their punishment simple. Let's keep it light. Next time, we could just sick some lions on them. Or wolves. Or disease. And listen, technically, I didn't tell Utnapishtim anything. Man's had a dream, and in his dream, he saw the secrets of the gods. So Enlil, no less than impressed by Utnapishtim's intuition, decided he'd reward this guy for his perceptive powers. Enlil climbs aboard the great ship and calls Utnapishtim and his wife to kneel before him. In almost knightly fashion, he goes, Hitherto Utnapishtim has been but a human, and henceforth Utnapishtim and his wife shall be like unto the gods. As in, they have been made immortal. And this was why Gilgamesh had sought him out. Because after the destruction of his bestie, Enkidu, by the gods, Gilgamesh was on a quest for immortality. And he had heard of Utnapishtim. Now, as I said on the comments of the last video, the oldest version of the story is probably that of Zyusudra, king of Shurupak circa 2900 BC. This story was as old to the writers of Noah as Noah is to us. But King Zyusudra is also a historical figure. He's the last king of Sumer before a great flood. Not a world flood, but a river flood. One among three in ancient Mesopotamia that are archaeologically attested for.